Sort of, sort of, kind of, right? And here's the thing. I'm getting a feeling that uh, you all want to learn how to make a monster, right? Yeah, you want to learn how to do that? Now, uh, uh, I need you to help me with imagining a wood plank here, okay? Can you do that? Right. And, uh, uh, sir, if you will, come here. 
Is that heavy? You can tell everybody that's heavy? All right, good job, all right? All right, so now what you're gonna need, you're gonna need heavy wet clay, W-E-D clay. It's a water-based clay, okay? Right? And we're gonna take slabs of that and we're gonna slab that onto our wood base, okay? Until we make a big enough area that we've got ourselves a big old thing that we can carve out, okay? Now, do you want to, uh, can, I, can I get you to come up here for a second? I'm gonna get some measurements. This is called a caliper, right? You gotta know something about anatomy when you're doing sculptures, okay? So I'm just gonna measure, just gonna measure, all right? And give me a big smile. Oh, and you give me an angry face. Oh, 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 that's scary. Hold on. Let me see if I can find your inner demon. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, oh this is perfect. Right? This is what happens when you get when you get angry, right? You're hungry, right? Ah, right? You see that? Oh wow, right? Now, uh, after we got our carving, what are we gonna do next? That's right, we're gonna spray paint it in Krylon high gloss spray paint. You're so smart, good job, right? And why would we do that, sir? Why would we just spray it in a high, high, high gloss spray paint? You're right, because we're gonna paint the plaster to it and we don't want the plaster sticking to the clay, right? Smart, you're very smart, thank you again. Now, once we uh, got our spray paint on there and we got it all dry, and then we're gonna take our paintbrush and we're gonna mix up our plaster, and then we're gonna do thin layers of plaster over top, okay? To make sure that we lock in all the details of that little inner demon, okay? And then, uh, as the plaster starts to thicken, we're gonna pile it up, right? And then once it gets big enough, we'll wrap it with some hip, uh, you know, fabric and stuff like that. We'll let it sit. And then we'll let it dry, and when it dries, it comes out looking something like this guy right here, okay? Big old plaster mold. Now, uh, Cameron, did you dig out the clay already? You did? Uh-oh, well, somebody did. And it looks like uh, that was a lot of work, okay? Now, if you look on the inside, you can see the negative image of the monster that we want to make, okay? Now, what are we going to do now that we've got all the clay out? That's right, we're gonna put mask latex in there and we're gonna let it dry. Very good, okay? Uh, and then when we let the mask latex dry, it's gonna come out looking like little Breely over here, okay? Little rough around the edges, uh, extra latex, you know, that we gotta cut off. So we'll take a Dremel tool, soften him up, take some scissors and trim off that excess latex. Now, are y'all good with scissors? I am not, okay? I've only got nine and two-third fingers because I was back there trying to drum off Greeley and my fingers went flying off somewhere. So if you see my finger, will you please find it and bring it back to me? Thank you very much. Now, moving on forward, if you want to come closer, uh, this is really where the magic starts to happen, when you start to apply the different paints and colors to your little monster, okay? Um, now, uh, Maxwell! Yeah. Maxwell! Hey, there he is. Uh, now, this is my assistant, Maxwell. Hi, assistant Maxwell. Say hey to everybody. Hello. Everybody say hey to Maxwell. All right. Very well. Now, Maxwell, he's the genius behind no I, I could never keep up with the, the information behind the, the painting and the mixing. But this guy, he, need, he tends to know everything. Can you tell the group exactly what it is that it takes all the little details, the create and the colors and the paint uh, textures and whatnot? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so please, it's uh, quite a complex ahead. process, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right, right, right the process just, I have no idea. And the, the, what? I have no idea. You are useless. Get away from here. All right. All right. Yeah. Never mind. I thought he was going to break out into a you know, big, long theory of uh, paint application, but um, that's a long story. Plus, it's top secret. We can't go on to that right now. Let's just go over here to our paint assembly line. Okay. Uh, we, we don't have a lot of time because time is an enemy here. Y'all can follow in. I promise you no monsters will creep up behind you and scare you at all. Anytime that you are here, they are not trying to eat you. There's not one right over there and behind the corner. I, oh, dad look. I got dad to look. All right, there we go. So look, here, uh, you know, this is the basic process. We've got a paint gun. We'll do a 180 degree this way, 180 degree that way, kind of give it a good spin. All right, and then we'll start off with different layers. Now we start off with the darker tones to get those deep, rich, dark tones. And then we'll move on to the highlights to get the highlighted parts of the mask. Then we'll move into the eyes and the mouth as well. 
Then adding in other details, kind of like making the cigar pop here, adding other highlights. Then going into another layer of darker details, adding in the pupils and the darker in, this, in, the, in between the grooves and stuff. To uh, finishing up the last details here with the eyes and making the eyes pop out. To then the finished product, right? Now if you take a good close look, right, right into the eyes, Right. You see the, the shyness in the eyes and the wetness of the lips, yeah. right? That is an epoxy glue that we use to get that real wet look, okay? So again, all the monsters that you see here tonight are made by hand. There's no machinery. Everything is carved out. Everything is done with plaster molds. Uh, now, uh, you know, you've got to really appreciate the artistry that goes into making stuff like this. Now, over here to our chaotic horror core, uh, this is basically what the warehouse looks like. It's a big mess, but we know where everything is, okay? Just like Karen, our gigantic she-devil over here, she stood about 20 feet tall. Uh, she had four people work her in this haunted forest, right? The only thing is she's been a very bad lady because she kept biting people's heads off and um, you know, had kids on leashes and stuff like that. So we had to decapitate her and put her over here in the corner. Now she's no longer, uh, you know, she cannot bite you, she cannot hurt you. But if you want to take photos, if you want some pictures with uh, Karen the She-Devil, come on in. I'll take, I can take pictures, I can take, do a whole family group photo. Maxwell can help out as well. Oh, be careful with your head, just go bite it off. Don't bite it off, no! Almost got you. You want to try? Okay, there we go. Put your hand up in there. Just, oh, here you go. Just, there, just a hand. Ah! Yeah, you want to try to get up there? You want to get in the picture, Mom? I'll take a photo. Yeah. There you go. All right. Look at, here you go. Look up here. Very good. One more. There we go. Nice. You're so brave. All right. Anybody else? No one? All right. Well, y'all continue on, Maxwell. Uh, I got I got things to do back at the warehouse. Can you take it over for me right now? Oh, absolutely. All right. Appreciate it. You'll follow Maxwell. I'll see you all later. Ladies and gentlemen, please gather around. Come close. Come close. Come close. I won't bite, but other things out there just might. I have the absolute pleasure to introduce you to Ed Edmonds' Mask of the Month collection. Now these masks are special, not only because of their exquisite detail, but because the molds we just spoke about a moment ago no longer exist for these, so they cannot be rec recreated at all, which is rather a shame. This guy right here, that you might be drawn to the blue shading in his, uh, in his, his features here, this is Tarragon the Rocketeer, definitely my favorite, and naturally, Blink here gravitates everybody's attention. Also, the baby in back, always a crowd pleaser. Please, come close, examine the detail uh, in, in very close proximity. It, it just brings it out, really, really. And you'll notice in the back there is a short description of each character associated with each mask. So not only is the mask itself detailed, but it has a detailed storyline behind it as well. Incredible detail. Now, let's move on to the next piece here. We've already found him, the man of the hour. Now, who would like to guess who this handsome devil is right here? Oh, very close, Edgar Allan Poe, quote, the raven nevermore. Now, this piece is unique because it was a collaborative effort between Ed Edmonds and George Dewey. And a very well done one, if I do say so myself. Quite a comfy share now. Definitely my favorite. All right, and over here we have an excellent photo opportunity. Who'd like to be devoured by a group of zombies? Come on up. So, you gotta get your neck up here. Good. <laughs> Tingling in the air, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and over here, yet another installment of the Master of the Month collection. So if I could draw your attention.
Now this guy has a lot of vivid color and detail, but my personal favorite is definitely Colossus. Something about the drool there just really brings it together for me. Or uh, perhaps the peeper. This is definitely somebody I want to see outside of my window at night. Look at those eyes. Fantastic. Now, yet another photo opportunity. Who'd like to be a severed head? Go on in back there. special piece. Now I have a very important question. Does anybody here know how to perform an exorcism? This woman looks like she could use a help. No? Me neither. Alright, let's give it a try though. Um, something compels you. You're feeling compelled. Very compelling. You think she'll be okay? Yeah. Take two, call me in the morning, that kind of situation, right? Would anybody like to take a, a photo perhaps with the possessed woman? Well jump on in. She doesn't bite. All the one in the corner there is a little bit creepy. Start with Ratliff here behind us. 
Does anyone know what an orc is? adoption by the way if anybody's interested well that was quick this is trish isaac newton rebecca and samantha trish is my favorite feel free to push her on the swing if you'd like oh, okay. just don't get too close to her face i see that it's a good assumption to make yes be a swinger she can't hurt you i promise Not short, can't decide yet. She's cute, isn't she? I'm not sure what these guys are doing. I think they call it tether human. I don't quite understand it. Can't tell if they're terrified or excited. These guys got a little lazy tonight. She's not the best at swinging. Nobody take yours. Nobody wants them. Do you want a sister? No! <laughs> I have been having this problem all night. <laughs> the rest of the family is over here. This is Wilson, the one that didn't make it. I don't see anybody. He's inside the barrel. I don't see You look hurt something. Watch your head there. He clearly didn't fit in with the group. This is Cousin Nick over here. That's the king, Joe. They say the children killed their family, but I've had my doubts about Cousin Nick here. He looks a little suspicious. <laughs> this is Chucky over here. Just watch your feet. Chucky, Chucky you want to get Chucky? Some say he also walks like an Egyptian. I don't know why I said that. about 50 million years ago. 
I think we might have prehistoric Bigfoot. I have not found the rest of his body. I don't think anybody has. It is quite massive. Yeah, from that side, it almost looks like he's grabbing you. It's quite gripping, actually. Yeah, Bigfoot is real. He has actually the moon that would allow the werewolves to come to light. In order to prevent that from happening, I took moon face and Michael as a souvenir. Michael J. Fox is his full name. Later after an actor I met while traveling a few times. Immaculate detail if you want to check them out. I love werewolves. You see the detail in his eyes and his teeth there. Yes. Just go look at the right in the eyes. Oh. Turn it on okay? I don't know why. favorite. 40 feet length, teeth up to a foot long, perfectly preserved in time, all the way from his tongue to his baby arms. Feel free to poke your head there if you like, he can't hurt you. I also had to remove the uvula, I got a little distracting. Oh, 
watcher. As you pass him, he'll guide you into the next division. Named him Ozzy after the musician I met while traveling through time. Once lost a bet to me and had to eat a bat on stage. Oh, and he actually did it. He's in the 70s. Serious stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Shake his hand if you dare. Anyone? Nothing happens. Nice one. He shook his hand? Good job. <laughs> you like his hair? It's very pretty. Hello, Mr. Mr. Ozzy. Ozzy. <laughs> Mr. Ozzy. Sorry. Remind me the rodent here. I apologize. I've got to figure that out earlier. Feel free to pet him. It's actually disgusting. <laughs> I, I wouldn't either. Like she's <laughs> you want to say hi to Squeakers? He almost got the cheese. He almost got the cheese. <laughs> Watch out for her. We'll get to this in a second, but he took Roswell. Roswell cut in half, okay? They're gonna tell you that Roswell was a weather balloon. It wasn't, okay? It was not a weather balloon. It was half of a spaceship, and this was out in New Mexico back in 1948, okay? 1948, okay? 50 years ago, okay? So, 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 so. <laughs> so listen, what you have to understand is like a lot of the stuff I've been saying sounds crazy, but I'm not, I'm not crazy. You understand, right, sweetheart? I'm not crazy, right? Exactly, see, she understands, okay. So, so, what the timekeeper told me was the only way to get out of this time dilation, this time loop that he has me in the same day, August 28th, 1996, I've been here three years, August 28th, 1996 to 1999, I've been here, that's, that's how long. Now, I'm not moving, nothing, talking, nothing, breathing, except for me, me, I'm the only one. But what he told me was that I have to get my friends here, all of my friends, them over there, they have to get treated like zoo animals, okay, so pictures and videos, and show the world, show them all that we exist, and then we get to go, we get to go home, so please, enjoy, and when you're ready, let me show you the best cosmic joke the time people here has ever pulled, so please enjoy, enjoy my research team, uh, my bedroom, in case you were curious, I used to, I used to sleep here, okay, right here was my bedroom, and over here was the research lab we conducted all of our experiments in, so, you miss it, so please enjoy so I can go home. <laughs> and the bones were here when I got here. I didn't make the bones. I didn't make them. Okay, enjoy. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, um, we don't, we don't need to talk about that. We, that's, we, that's a little unnecessary. Um, that, you don't. <laughs> you don't need to do that. Um, bones, 
okay, what I got here, a note, how, oh, I can look it back at it again, huh? That's, again, doing that one again, huh? Okay, boy, yeah, are you enjoying them? Yeah, no, don't worry, they don't move. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, and that, there's a, I don't know where the shorts are coming from, it's a traveler. <laughs> Roswell, Roswell, our greatest uh, failure. Um, and our three greatest leaders. Now you'll notice something interesting. With a team of three to lead a ship, you need one of them to be a pilot. None of those are pilots. There's a general, a navigator, and a lieutenant. All of those are very useful, but you don't have a pilot. You have a half ship and three members of, uh, three members of a crew instead of four, okay? Let me show you what happened to the fourth. Come on. Come on. Gather. Gather around. It's a great time. <laughs> Great time. You don't have to be so far. Don't worry. No, no, we're all safe here. Come gather. It's okay. See, they're brave. I like their spirit. Are you ready? This is what happens when you cut a ship in half and there's a pilot driving that ship, okay? Now, obviously, this this cut here did not happen when the ship got cut in half. I did an autopsy. And if you'd like to get in close here and take a nice examination, you'll see some holes and some erosion on the oxygens, this here and this here, right? You see those, right? So what that is, okay, that's a process called oxygenization. It's burning the blood, making it rust, okay? And that's happening inside of you, okay? Okay, so now that we have that established, what you have to now understand is that me and Orloff can make you better. We can fix you. All you have to do is lie down on the table and let Orlov do his best work at it. <laughs> would you like to lay down upon the table? Um, oh, would you? I'll be the test subject. Okay, lie up here. Don't worry, we're making him so much better. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hook you up now to our analyzer, okay? She's going to make sure you're not dying during the heart. Yeah. Oh, very active one. Do you need to hold Orlov's hand, young boy? Okay. Are you sure? Okay. A brave one as well. Are you ready? Orlov? He says no, but I'm, I'm sure that's just a joke. Okay. Three. Two, one! <laughs> Thank you. Ah, you're better. You're all better now.
you when I'm right. Two? Three. You're a little old for two. Three! Awesome. You're right, the perfect perfect age. Now this is a very lovely moment. Oh yes, take him out of the failure. Everything the timekeeper did to my people. You may be the next general of our people. It's quite likely, in fact. <laughs> All right, dear. Now. In a few weeks, we're going to be coming with numbers, okay? Listen to the numbers and follow them, okay? We'll take you with us and make you better than ever before, okay? <laughs> oh, such lovely things. And you, you as well, young man, You'll hear the numbers and follow and listen and they'll lead you. No thanks, I won't accept. But you'll, you must, it's in your jeans now. Uh oh. Don't worry, you have time. I can take you on. When you laid upon all our stable, that's what we did. We fixed you. We made you better. Timekeeper assistants do like to take things and keep them here. The alley has a way of trapping. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Wow. 
may pinch your hair. It's all right. She takes karate. She's tough. <laughs> jacket okay she's been doing that a lot lately she's been doing that all right let's let's get you in here let's get you on set real quick hey, um, it was her. this is Bree. uh she can answer any questions you might have i just gotta reset some stuff real quick i'll be right with you yeah yeah i think we can take a pie right here yeah. sally she doesn't know what she's talking about half the time so i keep telling people don't listen to sally but you know she just huh yeah yeah we can take a
right, I do want to thank everybody for watching. Again, we are at Distortion's Monster World, Monster the Midnight Attraction, here in Denver, Colorado. Huge shout out to Michelle at Ellis Communication Marketing for making this show happen for us tonight. If you haven't liked to subscribe, be sure to do so. And go ahead and hit that bell because I'll be doing a lot more live events, including Halloween. Colorado's largest party event for Halloween. So again, if you haven't hit that bell, be sure to do so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And for the ones that didn't watch it live, go ahead and leave some comments when you finally get around to watching it. See that with the light blasting right back at this, but do it again i am terry you are watching blown trips you are coming to you live from distortions monster world monsters to midnight attraction and until my next live event you all stay cool